Hi guys, ready for model? I know model verbs are a nightmare for you and really confusing. I prepared a few videos for you and models won't be a nightmare for you anymore. You will know that modal verbs are very common when speaking and writing in English. In a way, they are like auxiliary verbs. The first thing to notice is form. There are four basic rules regarding form. First of all, as you can see in the chart, they don't take the S in the third form of the present simple. You don't use auxiliaries to make questions and negatives. And the third point is too that they can be used in negative form themselves. Let's say like shouldn't or can't or won't, for example. The point is that they are not followed by to. The exception, of course, is have to and ought to. Now that we know the form, let's move on to use them. In this video, we are going to focus on certainty and possibility. With uses, we are going to use may, might, must and can. But when should I use them? The key thing is to know if the action is likely or unlikely to happen or if you are sure about something is happening or is going to happen. Well, if I'm positive about it, I am certain I use must. Imagine. Uh, let's have a few examples. Let's imagine a few situations. For example, with the winter storm Philomene, Madrid has been full and covered of snow. And we can say, people in Madrid must be very careful because their floor is very slippery. But imagine, you say, a friend of yours says, I am having a math exam tomorrow and it's very hard. And you tell her, you must be very nervous. Or again, another example for you. Imagine with the lockdown, truck drivers cannot stop to have a coffee. You can say the situation must be very tiring for them. Now, if we are positive or certain that something is not true, then we use can't. When we spell can't without contraction, you write it all together in just one word, cannot. But obviously, when you speak, it's more common to use can't. And then, in this case, the observation is that you are certain and positive that something can't be true. Again, let's have some examples for you. Imagine you have just woken up and you tell your mommy, Mommy, I'm so tired. And your mommy tells you, you can't be tired after 12 long hours of sleep. Now that we have seen certainty, let's move on to possibility. That is the second point of our video. Again, it's very confusing and this can make you nuts. But let's have some examples and you will see the light. As you know, many speakers to express possibility use a wide variety of modal verbs, such as may, might and could. They are in fact used in the same way. So, you can use them indistinctively when you refer to a situation that is possible but you are not sure that is happening or is going to happen. As you know, to have a current example, due to the coronavirus situation, the vaccine is being applied. But we don't know if the population immunity will be achieved. So we can say Spain could, may, might, or could develop herd immunity at the end of the summer. As usual, English is very tricky and we should analyze some nuances about the way to express possibility. As you can see in the diagram, may is used with stronger possibilities and might expresses weaker ones. Let's have some examples for you to understand when the possibility is weaker or stronger. If uh, you say schools might be able to open after the winter snow, it means that it's not likely that that will happen. But if I say schools 
may open after the winter storm, it means that probably the council is working on it and they will be able to open. So it's just a slight difference there, but sometimes it's interesting to know it. Another important aspect is that, as I told you before, when talking about possibility that you could use may, might and could, there is a small aspect that you should take into account. Could cannot be used in negative sentences when expressing possibility. You have planned a party with your friends for the weekend and eventually your friends are staying. So you feel horrible about it and you have to tell your friends. So you will say, guys, sorry, but I might not or may not throw the party. And in this example, you cannot say couldn't because as I told you before, couldn't in the negative form cannot be used for possibilities. Now it's your turn and let's practice. If you need to rewind the video, feel free to pause it. Let's go for the first try. You didn't get to bed until 5 a.m. You mm, be tired. You said must. Good job. You must be tired. Second try. The sky looks a bit black. What would you say? I think it might or may or could rain. Well done again. Congratulations. Now it's time to finish. Let's wrap up this video to clarify the main points. So let's have a look at this chart and you will see that depending on how certain or positive you are about something, you use a different model. As you can see, if you are positive about it, if something is definitely true, you use must. In the middle, if there is a, a certain possibility that something can take place, you use may, might or could. And if you are positive or certain that something isn't true, then you use can't. Well, that's all for now. Keep on practicing because practice makes perfect. Keep posted with our videos because we will be continue uploading material and more videos about models for you. Bueno, la teacher los espera en los próximos videos.